डॉक्टर अमिता गिल डॉक्टर अशोक गुप्ता डॉक्टर राखी गुप्ता डॉक्टर के एस शर्मा एंड डॉक्टर सिमोय चैटर्जी टू प्लीज कम फॉरवर्ड एंड लाइक द लैम्प आई ऑल्सो रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर सुरेंद्र निमेश टू जॉइन दैम प्लीज Thank you, sir. Dr. Ashok Gupta, Vice Chancellor, the IS University, Jaipur. Professor Rakhi Gupta, Rector and Registrar, the IS University, Jaipur. My fellow colleagues, faculty members, and participants, I welcome you all to the inaugural session of the five days workshop on animal cell culture and related molecular biology techniques. At the outset, I would like to express my deep gratitude. to dr akhil c banerjee scientist 7 national institute of immunology new delhi for acceding to our request to grace the occasion and deliver the inaugural address it is a proud privilege for us at the is university to organize an event of such magnitude and significance the overall intention of this workshop is to sharpen the research skills and provide training to scholars in animal cell culture handling i am sure each of the sessions will add tremendous value to our understanding of various issues related to molecular biology we are here to benefit from the expertise of our resource persons and get guidance for our future research endeavors once again i welcome you all to the five days national workshop we are delighted to have you all here and hope that you will have a stimulating and productive experience over the next few days thank you good morning everybody at the very outset my very sincere thanks to the vice chancellor dr gupta the honorable registrar rakhi gupta dr s chatterjee and uh, Nidhi for uh, extending the very kind invitation to me to uh, speak to you in front of all of you about some of the work and experiences uh, that we have gained over the, over the years, and uh, also thank to his illustrious better half, uh, Dr. Surendra. So with that, <coughs> let me uh, begin by. Uh, the topic is animal cell culture and how it has uh, changed or helped us understand various biological phenomena okay 
Uh, I'll just give you a few examples very quickly. Suppose you want to make a, a vaccine against uh, hepatitis. So where will you grow the hepatitis virus? Okay. Or so to grow the virus. Okay. My talk will be more focused on viruses because that's what I have been working on. And uh, my advice to all the students is, you know, the, in life, you know, there are so many interesting things. You know, you may find. 12 different interesting things in life, okay, but you can't make progress in 12 directions, okay, you have to f narrow your focus, okay, so I have uh, tried to stick to viruses and that itself is a huge uh, ocean and uh, <clears throat> my interest is more on HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, but there are other viruses also and we are just trying to understand. <clears throat> so. If you look at the viruses, I will be more focused on viruses. If you look at viruses, viruses uh, and humans, we have evolved together. So what is the current thinking about the viruses is that the virus is definitely smarter than us. Why is it smarter? Okay, to get to think of it. Because from one virus to two virus or four viruses, you know, it's a matter of half an hour or something. But humans will take much longer. You see, that, that's why uh, Joshua Lederberg, you know, had said that mankind will forever be fighting against these organisms. And organisms, mitre organisms, will always win. Why will they win? Because they can replicate faster. One to two becomes, for example, E. coli. Hmm? Becomes one to two in 20 minutes. Okay? Humans, years together. Okay? So, uh, mankind will always and uh, will fight mankind comes up with devices how to defeat the virus okay but then virus also keeps on finding new ways to evade the system okay so we call this is this is the co-evolution and that is the latest line of research to understand how uh, cells how virus escapes okay or surmounts okay one barrier after the other okay and it can only do by very clever viruses are very clever okay and especially human immunodeficiency virus is very clever okay a viruses they change a lot okay. so if something is for example influenza every every year there's a there's a, there's a talk oh this is a seasonal influenza people will come down with influenza because each with each uh, seasonal influenza, uh, influenza epidemic, the virus is changing. Okay, why does I want to uh, leave one message here? See, viruses most of you have have studied. So viruses either have RNA as a genome or DNA as a genome. Okay, it could be single stranded RNA, double stranded RNA. Those viruses that have RNA as genome, for example, influenza, then HIV and others, for RNA, the change is much more, okay? They change a lot. What do I mean by change a lot? See, viruses, if they have this RNA in their genome, then another copy of RNA has to be made, okay? And when this copy is made, then it makes mistakes, okay? The enzyme, it, it makes mistakes. That's why you get what we call variants, or quasi species, or... So, what I want to leave a message, RNA viruses, it's a problem to make a vaccine. Why is it a problem to make a vaccine? Because it can accumulate changes. Okay. Why is it, does it accumulate changes? Because the, 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 what is our blueprint? You know, we, our blueprint is DNA, okay? So one copy of DNA, and uh, we all know now that we have about 30 or 50,000 genes that dictate what we are, okay? And um, uh, so, RNA viruses, they change a lot because the faithful copy of one RNA to the other RNA, because see, once the virus enters, okay, one virus or 10 viruses enter, then million viruses have to come out, okay, because viruses keep on. So, those viruses will have lots of changes. So, that is the problem. So, and once you have the change, see, uh, our body mounts an immune response in the form of a potent antibody, okay, 
each virus will have its own specific antibody. Okay? That's how you design the diagnostic test. Okay? How, let's say a person is infected with HIV. Okay? How can you tell that person is infected with HIV? Because virus has entered and our immune systems have made specific antibodies. Antibody that, will, that is specific for this virus. Okay. So, then on that basis, you have a diagnostic test. So, antigen specimen. So, essentially what we are testing is antigen antibody reaction. Okay. So, you have this antigen antibody reaction. Based on that, you can say that it is a, it is, or you are infected with this virus. Okay. And that is true with many other diseases, not only viruses. Any pathogen when it enters, okay, our immune system takes care of it, okay, and then antibodies are made, and then there's a cellular arm also that comes into picture, okay, and then the antibodies are made, okay, and antibodies actually protect. For example, if, if you get an, an influenza virus, you will make an, an, an immune response, okay, and then your antibodies ultimately and, and some cellular immunity will control your virus infections. That is a natural cycle of natural way of getting protection. Okay. But what about HIV? HIV if, if something is changes continuously, then that's a problem. The so immune system does a very good job. By the time it targets one, it has the virus has changed so much. Okay. So with HIV it's a constant battle. The virus is changing, the immune system is making its own response and see this virus also HIV especially is so clever that it replicates okay in macrophages and T lymphocytes and T lymphocytes are your major you know immune system that our immune system depends on a functional T cell okay so if the antibody so if the and the virus Macrofa it, it multiplies in macrophages, multiplies in T cells. So the T cells, the virus is multiplying, okay. And then if no T cells are left, then where will you, how will you mount an immune response? We can't make antibody then, right? So the immune system is compromised because the virus is changing a lot, okay. And what happens, at least in the case of HIV, we know that virus enters our body okay and then it infects CD4 positive lymphocytes okay? it infects lymphocytes okay and then let's say in a typical course about 10 to 15 years okay then this uh, in 10 to 15 years this <coughs> virus has changed so much okay uh, and it continues to destroy your CD4 T lymphocyte. So it has a nice surrogate marker. Okay, you and me and anybody else in this lab, healthy persons, we will have about let us say 1500 per ml or so in the blood. Okay, HIV infected individual, that value of CD4 positive lymphocytes or lymphocytes goes down to almost 150. The moment it is below 100. And below 50 okay you have lost all your capacity to fight any infection okay see in our bodies in our intestine we have lots of bacteria and viruses always you know teeming lots of it okay and those are good bacteria we need them okay and before I go on you know it's a very active area of research today for young generation, those who want to take up, you know, microbiological research. What is the microflora in the intestine? Okay, okay. Those play a major role in dictating a lot of your, you know, well-being, everything. Okay. just say if you go to uh, some, I don't know about this part. In Delhi, there is a mother dairy. Okay, mother dairy where you buy curd. Okay, so these days what we say, bhai humko ye probiotic dahi chahiye. Okay, what is probiotic? It is nothing but tons and tons of bacteria added from outside. We, our body system needs them. Okay, so 
gut flora, studying of this, and it, and it dictates so many other immune system. That is a new line of research. Okay, so we need those bacteria. Okay. So as I was telling you, HIV infected individuals, the CD4 counts goes down, 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 down. The moment it is down below 100, okay, then your immune system is compromised, and then you begin to have fungal infections and this infection and that infection. Okay. So now, so these are the. Uh, I, I told you why vaccine has been a problem with this virus because this virus changes a lot. Something which changes a lot, how can you make a vaccine? Okay. This is not the problem with the DNA viruses. DNA viruses, one copy of DNA, faithfully makes another copy of DNA. Okay. Okay. Not in case of RNA viruses. Okay. I told you this virus, HIV especially, changes a lot. <coughs> so, where does HIV uh, okay, I'm going to introduce one term now. It's called zoonotic infection. What is zoonotic infection? Virus infection coming from animals to humans. What we call host species jump. Okay. So newer diseases in future that you will see, they will be coming from host species jump type of phenomenon. Very recently, you must have seen chicken flu, chicken flu, everybody was very scared, okay, that the virus that is circulating in chicken can jump to humans and then it can begin to infect others. Okay. Those who are in the habit of reading newspapers at least, okay, of course these days you can read the newspaper in the form of bullet in, the, in your internet, but those from our, our traditional viewpoint we have been reading newspaper, Abhito, what is making news these days? It is the Ebola virus. Okay, I'm sure more, most, most of you would have studied. And Ebola virus, it seems, is, is extremely infectious. Okay. And it is presently spreading, it has multiple species. Okay. So it can, let us say, inf inf infect a bird. From bird or some insects, it can come to humans. So again, these those species jump type of phenomena. So Ebola viruses, those who have read, not read newspapers, last two, three days of newspaper, read about Ebola virus, okay? Because who knows, it may enter, 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 enter uh, India from Africa, okay? And then, but then you have to understand why is this virus so infectious, okay? Same thing with dengue virus, same thing with Japanese encephalitis virus. What is the problem? Dengue virus, again, it has a mosquito as a host. So when the mosquitoes bite, they transfer the virus to us. Dengue virus, huge problem, okay? Huge problem in India. One in, one in ten in, 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 in India, they are infected with dengue virus, okay? It doesn't show, but in small cases, it can be very dangerous, you know? Hemorrhagic syndrome appears. And these viruses, Japanese encephalitis virus and Dengue viruses, okay, they are spread by mosquito borne. You will ask the questions, how are they maintained in the nature? Okay, for example, if you go to Gorakhpur, Eastern UP, it is a very huge problem, Japanese encephalitis, okay, and high mortality rate of children. So these, why am I telling you these things? Because some of you in future will study or will take up this challenge and develop effective vaccines, newer approaches and to tackle these diseases. These are diseases of more, more diseases of India. Okay? And Indian problem will be solved by you all. You are the future of this country. Okay? So, I told you about Japanese encephalitis, dengue. Okay? So, uh, let me get back again to HIV. HIV all started, it all started in Africa, as we can understand, because, and it's, and, and then again, the whole species jump, it may have jumped from gorilla or chimpanzee, chimpanzee to human. So viruses can adapt, okay. That is why there was a fear for this chicken flu. Virus is circulating in chicken, because humans and chickens, you know, the way they carry, the, the, the people who sell, they have such close association with chicken, okay. It can transfer to humans and then it, it, it may become virulent pathogen, okay. So it all started, HIV, it all started in Africa, okay. 
by host species type of phenomenon, maybe 1920 or even earlier. And then this virus kept on changing. Okay, so when something changes a lot, okay, then it changes. Let us say here, after five years here, another. Year. So when it changes, then then you have to give some sort of a classification, some sort of a name. Okay, so for example. Uh, HIV, we know there are many genetic subtypes, okay, because the virus keep, keeps on changing. And in Africa, so we have, we have classified them, okay, we call it A, B, C, up to K, and then this virus also can recombine, okay, one cell can be infected by the two subtypes, and then you can get recombinants, so you can have BC recombinants, you can have AE recombinant. okay, so what are the subtypes, A to E and K, and then there are recombinants. Okay, so this slide that that I showed it's, it's a it's a good representation. <coughs> and and the virus kept on changing in Africa. So you have. And we have de definite uh, multiple genetic subtypes. So we have A, B, C to K, and then B and C can recombine and other complex forms. And virus is forever changing. It is, it is even changing today. So when it changes such a lot, then we give a different name. Okay. In it, from this slide, I would like to give one message only that if you look at Africa, okay, right in the middle, okay, that is the most colored part, okay, why is it colored? Because you have genetic subtype A, B, C, K, everything you will find in Africa, okay, and if you look at the dark blue on the extreme left top, okay, and let us say Europe, so Europe and Africa, Europe and USA, you have subtype C, Okay, very important to understand that there are multiple subtypes, but how different subtypes have gone and to different types of the and uh, spread to different regions of the world. Why? This is a research question. We don't know. Okay. So all I want you to remember that in India we have subtype C. Okay. And if a vaccine has to be made, then you have the most colored part okay but you can see blue in in US and blue also in in UK London UK Switzerland Finland okay so all one message from from the slide is that India we have genetic subtype C HIV okay and but in US and UK it is subtype B they are very substantially different okay when they are different then the immune responses are also different virus Severity is also different. So who will who will understand? Why would America show any interest in studying subtype C? Okay, it is you, the young generation, people in India would have to study HIV subtype C, how to make vaccine. Okay, how do vaccines work? Mostly vaccines have been successful because you can make potent neutralizing antibody. Okay, it neutralizes the virus. 
That's how most vaccines have been successful, that you can make potent neutralizing antibody. We, we get infected most of the time, so our body immune makes an immune response, the virus is cleared. So from this slide, in India we have subtype C, but in US and UK we have subtype B. Why this change? Why this selective spread? Okay, we don't understand. This is a research question. Okay, there, we have, there are some theory. Okay, in India also, let us say 50 percent or more of HIV-1 infected individuals also are infected with TB. Okay, so let us say we, we all, many of us, we have latent TB, you know, which never expresses. You know, we got infected, but it is latent. But the moment you have HIV, okay, the TB is active. Okay. So how is HIV stimulating from latent to active form of TB? This is another very active area of research. Okay. And we know if a person has both, okay, then it is much more complicated scenario. You get very high virus growth in that person, very high growth of mycobacterium and drug resistance is a huge problem, multi-drug resistance uh, uh, in case of uh, TB is a huge problem. So you understand our, our situation is very different. In US and UK there are hardly any TB cases but here we have 50% of people who are suffering from HIV they also are infected with TB when mycobacterium tuberculosis is there, TB is there, and HIV is there, then that combination is deadly. Okay? They both seem to help each other, they, and uh, the uh, rapid development of drug-resistant TB, multi-drug-resistant TB. Okay? So this is a huge, huge problem. I also want to end up in a slightly uh, slightly promising note that let us say 10 years back if you look you know if you get if you hear anybody or from anybody oh this person is infected with HIV that person you know will be removed from society go into depression and then you know the treatment was very expensive but with new drugs okay people treat HIV today infected individual as a chronic manageable disease okay we have cheaper drugs now maybe thousand rupees per month or so you can keep your virus down okay with these drugs and can almost lead a normal life okay but you have to take your drug lifelong this is very diff different than any other diseases you have to take antiretroviral drugs lifelong okay even if you stop for three or four days, okay, lots and lots of virus will come out in your system. So you understand? So this virus, you need the treatment lifelong. Why is it so? Because if you look at the replication cycle of this virus, okay, virus, the genome of this virus becomes part of our genome, of our cell that has a genome, it becomes part of our cell okay and then let's say many of these cells will not express the virus okay so this entire genome of virus sitting quietly in many cells that's why once you're infected you're infected for lifetime okay you always need the treatment so, and integration or becoming one viral genome okay in the form of DNA why it's also called a retrovirus retro opposite ulta okay so this virus is RNA okay it forms DNA in the cytoplasm and the DNA becomes double stranded DNA and gets integrated into the genome okay take care so uh, next slide please next next so this vi virus uh, has a structure like it has an envelope, uh, in, in, if you can look at the bottom, and it has an RNA genome and it has GP160 on the surface. Okay. GP160 is 
the envelope mole virus has envelope, GP160 is like this sitting on it. So GP16, GP160 sitting on top of it. Most neutralizing antibodies okay, are made against envelope for any virus. Okay. In case of influenza, it is heme agglutinin against with. So, I want to make one or two sentences quickly that these days something has changed very dramatically. Okay, what has changed dramatically in our thinking that virus <coughs> GP160 against which most neutralizing antibodies are made. Okay, okay, and GP160 is extremely sugar glycosylated. Okay, and so there is an. It, it was found that, let us say, if 1,000 people get infected, maybe one or two people will make very potent neutralizing antibody. So, identify those people, okay, and there is a huge program in India today, multi-multi-billion dollar program, along with, with the uh, IRB, International AIDS Vaccine Initiative. So, people, let us say, I told you, 1,000 people get infected, maybe one or two individuals will make extremely potent neutralizing antibodies. So people are going backwards, okay, and trying to understand what are those antigens, okay, in this envelope molecule, okay, the epitope or region which makes this potent neutralizing antibodies and then perhaps you can make a good vaccine. That is one latest area of HIV research that is going on, okay. Potent neutralizing antibody. Next slide. Yeah, next. Achha. How did, uh, I told you, this is an animal cell culture uh, based uh, the symposium, okay? And animal cell culture, we, we can't even think, you know, how progress can be made uh, in understanding the viruses, okay? Uh, how do you understand how many good infectious virus is present, let us say, in one tube, okay? By, so you do multiple dilutions, okay, and then you have a cell line, you leave it for some time and these plaques, okay, these nothing but the virus, you know, it lies cells, another round, another lies cells, so you get these plaques and then you count them. So this is one way of knowing the infectious virus, okay. See, without cell culture, it would, would not have been possible to understand and we know so much because we have the cell culture, okay. So we know this virus is, is uh, if you add virus to these cells, the virus will grow for some time. What time will, will it grow? What enzymes, what genes will be expressed? Okay. So the whole, this gene therapy has been, has come out from this, from under, deep understanding of how viruses grow in these cell cultures. Okay. And these are the plaque formation one, one can do. So cell cultures are playing an extremely important role. Okay. And there are primary cultures. What are primary cultures? Suppose uh, you want to grow, let's say, isolate from a fetus, let us say, uh, from, a, uh, from an aborted fetus, what we did, we isolated some, uh, some lung tissue, and then you can grow for, let us say, 10 to 15 times only, okay? So primary cultures, they have a finite life, okay? But if the culture is transformed, okay, means some virus or some onc, some, some cancer genes have been activated in them, then you can maintain them as a cell line. The most remarkable is the HeLa cell line. Okay, it has come from a black woman's ovary, a uterus, I think, ovary, uterus. So from there, the cell line has been established. Okay. And world over, whoever is studying, you know, any, vi any virological problem or many other types of problem, any drug related problems, you know, you can study, use, we have been studying using HeLa cell cultures. Okay. Again, it has come from primary culture, from uterus, which was transformed in some way and then it became a cell line. Okay. Okay. Primary cultures, you can only grow 10 to 15 times and then it stops. Just like, so you can understand the, the life you can understand how by 10 to 15 years it, it comes to an end. Okay. Many of the senescence, natural senescence pathway, you can understand by... So. 
ओके नेक्स्ट टाइम नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट या वन ऑफ माय कोलीग्स कुड नॉट मेक इट एंड ही वुड हैव टॉक्ड टू यू अबाउट इज एन एक्सपर्ट इन माइक्रोबैक्टीरियम ट्यूबुलोसिस डॉक्टर योगेंद्र सिंह could not make it because he was unwell and the last last moment we came to know that he's ill so dr y singh has been studying how mycobacterium tuberculosis gets inside the macrophages and can live there happily for long okay the same thing with hiv hiv in macrophages can live longer so they both can live long in macrophages okay that is how the disease is manifested both of them they have this i am trying to understand why what makes them usually macrophages you know the the, macro, the pathogens are killed but what are the mechanism that allow them to survive in macrophages okay next yeah next so this is the structure of the virus and most of you must have known um, let, 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 let's click skip this the next next ha ah, ye yeah, this is important so any virus when it enters okay then let us say if this is the virus viruses they are very organized and very beautiful to look at under the microscope so these are the envelope uh, this is the envelope molecule the gp160 on the surface okay so 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 these are your virus okay the green ones and this is your host cell this is your host cell okay so virus needs one receptor which is called cd4 virus needs another receptor which is a chemokine receptor there are number of other receptors okay but most important are these two C, uh, cxcr ccr5 and cxcr4 these are seven transmembrane so we need hiv envelope interacts with this and then it interacts with this and then the virus will go inside this the membrane of the virus fuses with the membrane of the cell okay our cell then the rna and along with proteins are in the cytoplasm okay this rna is that changed to double stranded dna it goes through the nuclear pore and it gets integrated in our genome in fact most of our genome dna we have remnants or we have small bits and pieces of retroviruses we all have it okay and that has become a uh, temporal and trying to understand the evolution when was it uh, inserted what type of uh, retrovirus elements we have this is an active area of research okay so this virus integrates into this our genome and then once it integrates okay then this virus has its own promoter and then the proteins rna is made the virus is assembled and then it is it is thrown out okay so you can understand this is why is it called a retrovirus because there is a step from rna to dna okay rna to dna and what is the enzyme reverse transcriptase okay it makes rna to dna this dna along with other other complexes protein of hiv enters into the nucleus uh, nuclear pore nuclear and it gets integrated in the genome okay now here i'm going to talk about one concept you know which has revolutionized our gene therapy okay this virus is our enemy right you know but then how can this virus be your friend okay this is where retrovirus based gene therapy is also called lentivirus based gene therapy is literally revolutionizing the gene therapy or revolutionizing the use of therapy there are not one but several several clinical trials are going on using this this retrovirus based or retrovirus based technology what we have exploited what we have exploited is it's is the nature that this in this genome gets integrated in our genome so what we do is now now in our lab also what we what we know is that we know this vi virus is 10000 bases long okay and when it is 10000 bases long 
then where precisely? Suppose you're not making it silly, okay? We know which part of the genome of this virus I can place this insulin gene, okay, along with this promoter, okay? And then there's a technology that will allow you that this will be integrated into your cell. So that is what gene therapy is. Suppose you're, let us say, one particular normal gene you're not making, okay? So what I will do is, I will take a normal gene, put a copy, or put a promoter on it, okay? And using this technology, I can infect any cell. And that will be expressed. So what we have exploited, the, na the natural feature, most important feature is that this genome naturally gets integrated our genome into our genome. So this is this based gene therapy, okay? One particular name, you know, we can all take with a lot of pride is Professor Indra Verma. Okay? Professor Indra Verma is currently the chief or president of Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences USA. He had revolutionized this field, HIV-1 based gene therapy or retrovirus based gene therapy. Okay? And several, maybe three dozen clinical trials are going on using this concept. Clear? So we have exploited the, na the natural cycle of this virus, its ab natural ability to integrate into our genome. Okay? So a cell that is, say, was not making normal insulin, with this technology, you know, you can make tons of viruses that will have this gene, you throw them and you get. So, so how is it done, let us say? You take stem cells out from an individual, okay, and then through this virus, the virus will begin to make, it, let us say, insulin, okay, and then you put it back to that person, okay, and it is, since it's a stem cell, okay, it will make all kinds of cells, they will all have this interfering gene, so there's a new line of therapy, okay. Next slide. Okay, this is again, once again, the cartoon showing, okay, this is, this is your virus, okay? And this is your uh, membrane, this is your one protein which is very important, it's called GP1, envelope protein, GP160. You have the CD4 glycoprotein and then you have this seven transmembrane, CCR5. <coughs> so students remember one thing, CCR5 is most important molecule on the surface virus absolutely depends on this to get in, okay? Virus needs, virus can only enter provided a host cell has CD4 and CCR5, okay? If you don't have CCR5, then I'll show you the virus cannot enter. Then, and this, hap this is happening when in, in the gut lining, in the mucosal lining, okay? So macrophages and Langerhans cells they are rich in CCR5, okay? But down the line, let us say after 10 or 15 years of infection, virus, what it does, it begins to use another co-receptor. So it's a co-receptor switch, change. What is the co-receptor? So but again, similar type, but it's called CXCR4, okay? Same, this is, so this is present on T lymphocytes. So virus changes, and I told you this virus just keeps on changing, okay? So it begins to use the T lymphocytes now. So it begins to kill the T lymphocytes, okay? So then, then what is the problem? Then you, once your T lymphocytes are getting killed, then that is the time you are immune compromised. Okay? But is there, I will tell you one small story and end my talk. So if you have this, uh, if you don't have CCR5, is there, is there any evidence, okay? So sometime back, some people in, in New York, they were coming, they were engaging in this behavior, okay, but not coming down with the disease, okay. So people asked them, let us test whether the CCR5 is normal. And it turned out that their CCR5, okay, had every horrendous, notable mutation. It is called Delta 32. It has 32 base pair deletion in the open reading frame. So CCR5 is not even made. 
okay or is or whatever the meal is highly truncated not functional okay so next slide next slide please okay uh, this is this is how typical graph looks like plenty of viremia most of us you know we will do as soon as you get infected within weeks <coughs> plenty of virus is made and but the immune system all of our immune system is very good okay but then this virus keeps on replicating because it can hide into different cells and this is the virus growth that's after 10 15 years and and look at this cd4 count okay this cd4 count keeps doing going down 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 okay that's happy so this is a typical course of hiv viral infection okay next slide so i was telling you that you need ccr5 And, and in New York, they found that some people do not get infected, uh, do not come down with disease because <coughs> because they have this mutation. So at that time, I started my career at NII, and we started looking at what is the um, do we have this HIV one protective mutation in India? And I'm going to give you an example now. In, in infectious biology, there is no example as dramatic, as exciting as this. If you have 32 base perturbation mutation in CCR5, those people are protected from HIV. Okay, and we screened normal people. Those are the first two papers. We found one individual who was heterozygous for this Delta mutation. Okay, no homozygous. white people 1% population is homozygous for this in india you almost don't see it okay what we see is 10 to 15% uh, or let's say very diff with great difficulty some heteros heterozygous individuals so the message is this mutation which is common in among white white people it's almost not there in asia and africa so we don't have this protective mutation now As, I, as you remember, I told you that uh, people who have this mutation don't come down with this infection. So, is there? Can you exploit this knowledge? <coughs> can you exploit this knowledge now as an, an great antiviral or great anti-viral HIV approach? Yeah. We knew it had potential, but it's only last two three years. <coughs> In three or four very top journals, okay, New England Journal of Medicine, Lancet, and others, what people have done a beautiful experiment. Okay, they have taken one individual who was not expressing, who was homozygous for Delta 32, and here is another individual who was infected with HIV. Okay, so stem cells from this individual who was not expressing CCR5, okay, a Delta 32 homozygous, they have transplanted it. to thank you they have transplanted it to an individual whose bone marrow was depleted so new stem cells are not coming so the new t lymphocytes and macrophages now that will be made in this hiv one infected individual will not express ccr5 <coughs> the idea is virus will not be able to spread and it turned out to be a great success story okay There so far, there was never anything like cure from HIV, okay, because virus can hide. But in this individual, they could not find virus for, for number of years. So you see, something which happened, which we, which was observed, 10-15 years, it took so long to have a clinical application. Okay, I think I will stop here, Nidin. Nidhi, can I go on, or uh, is it? We have some time. Okay. So I told you, CCR5 is very, very important. You remember one thing? Where, where are they present? On macrophages and Langerhans cells. Where are they present? On the gut lining. HIV infection. In the main route is heterosexual transmission. Okay. Although. Let's say in Myanmar and China, that that area, needle sharing is one one such uh, avenue where the HIV is, is also spread. Okay, uh, mothers from their milk can transfer to the kids. Okay, 
So, the government has taken a very bold step, Indian government, along with the help of World Bank and others. And there's an organization called NACO, National AIDS Control Organization. As soon as you come to know that the, birth, the mother is about to deliver, and if she is positive for HIV, okay, the mother is immediately put onto this antiretroviral therapy, and the baby, as soon as she is born, is also given some type of antiretroviral therapy, and that has resulted in almost complete stoppage of HIV transmission from mother to children. Okay, and it's mandatory. Okay, any inf HIV when infected individual, a mother will get this treatment free. Okay. Also, uh, I'd like to tell you uh, some success story uh, that uh, in, uh, with antiretroviral therapy, our Indian companies have done a remarkable job. Sipla and all, okay, and Bombay company. So, in, in making this therapy affordable to HIV one infected individual, and not only in India, they supply outside also to Africa and other countries. And that's why this therapy is an affordable therapy now. Still, thousand rupees for an, for a poor person, maybe quite quite something, but then. It's, it's perhaps within manageable reach. So the CCR5, I told you, is very important. Okay, how it was exploited in the form of almost a cure. Of course, this is experiment with one individual. How can you translate it into common people, common mass? You know, it's all very complicated issues. Okay, but then, can you very specifically target CCR5? Okay then you can target HIV. And my lab, along with Nidhi, we have, uh, we have been working on uh, <coughs> making some ribozymes, okay, that, and some catalytic DNA, okay, which, which we call DNA enzyme, which is a brother of rib ribozyme, okay. So what is ribozyme? Ribozyme, most of you will probably know. It is, you know, any target RNA, okay, and then you can make this short catalytic RNA, Okay. And you can make these designer RNAs, okay, catalytic RNAs, and it will clean. Okay, that's why the person who discovered it got the Nobel Prize. <coughs> so you can make such catalytic RNA, catalytic DNA, or ribozymes against. So, and we knew that one percent white people do not express CCR5, but they are normal. Okay. It's a huge population. You know, one percent of a normal population, white population, have this mutation. But this vi this CCR5 is needed by the virus. So obvious question was the CCR5 is not needed. So you can always ask, you know, why is this host protein? All I can say, many systems are many kind of immune systems are redundant immune systems. Suppose you target CCR5, then there are other other CCR5s, like okay, other C CCR3, 2, 5, 9. There's a huge family. They can play some they can play, or they can replace the role of CCR5. That's why people don't suffer from any diseases. So we made ribozyme and catalytic DNA, we call DNA enzyme against CCR5. Next slide. Next. Ah. So she was my second PhD student. With all humility, we were the first, the first one to make ribozyme against uh, this CCR5 and I told you how do you make ribozyme those who are interested we can get into some details okay so if, if, if this is your target RNA then there's a short catalytic RNA you can make in presence of magnesium ion you can get so these are sequence specific cleavages okay and I'll, I, I think Nidhi you made against the X gene of hepatitis and, and many other genes and uh, we have published extensively uh, those are quoted also very extensively so so you can make such catalytic RNA, catalytic DNA okay, against, and these are molecular scissors. Remember, these are sequence space, sequence specific. Okay, how, how do you make it sequence specific? By giving complementarity, by giving <coughs> Watson click based pairing. Okay, so you can make this. So my, my our lab has produced these kinds of uh, you know catalytic RNA uh, ribozymes against these two, uh, against any pathogen. 
So, what are the next slide? Um, okay, I'll, I'll say, I, 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 will, I will end my talk in a, in, in a slightly philosophical terms. Most of you must have heard what is RNAi or siRNA. Okay. <clears throat> so this RNAi, RNA, small RNA, is revolutionizing our thinking how gene expressions are controlled. Okay. We thought, you know, DNA. From DNA to, what is the central dogma? DNA to RNA, RNA to protein. We thought DNA to RNA is the major, major controlling event of gene expression. But there are small RNAs now, at the three, mostly at the three prime end, that control the gene expression by, by targeting many target RNAs. Okay. So this RNA, small RNA, okay, micro RNAs, SI RNAs, okay, you, you must read these, you know, the, the, thousands and thousands of paper now. So these control many gene and we are trying to understand how. So viruses and host cells we have evolved together okay as I was, and I started my talk saying that <clears throat> how cells okay host cell will mount its own response to protect itself if you don't want to die okay so one so many what we call host restriction factors for the virus and there are many okay and but the virus is also very smart okay it it overcomes one after the other by various mechanisms and i'm going to talk one such mechanism how this virus um, exploits or makes the rnai mediated you know immune effects of a cell non functional so this slide, the, okay, what is the assay? You will, you will have lots of blue cells, okay, for, for, from, a, from a gene that is a GFP. And if you throw your, some of the HIV genes and you begin to see these green dots back again, that means, and this green is, let us say, ex green expression is dependent upon the RNAi machinery. If you, don't, if you have RNAi machinery, Okay, you have this green machinery, you throw your candidates in so, and ask the question, which one is it interfering? And what we reported in this in this case, that one HIV, one HIV protein called REV, it makes the RNAi machinery, micro RNA based machinery dysfunctional. Okay. And this is how this virus escapes one major you know, innate immunity of a cell by making the RNAi machinery, okay, which is very important. Now we understand, I'm beginning to understand how, how various RNAi machinery is important. So this virus, one protein we have identified, and we identified as RNAi suppressors. So again you see this virus has been smart enough to bypass this RNAi based inhibition or RNAi based phenomenon of the cell. So this is a, there's a constant battle between host and pathogen and the current direction for, for any, uh, it, it could be bacterial pathogen, to understand how this virus exploits them, okay? And if it exploits them, then you can target it, okay? And make and protect your cell, cell rather than the pathogen, okay? So I have introduced many, uh, I talked on various aspects today. But let me summarize a few key points, okay? All viruses, they change, okay? RNA viruses change the most, okay? okay? RNA because it is difficult to make the faithful copy of one RNA genome to another genome. Okay? That's why it, is, it has been difficult to make a vaccine against RNA viruses, okay? HIV changes a lot and it has many genetic subtypes. India, we have subtype C. Other places we have US and UK we have subtype B. Why this change? We don't understand. What dictates this selective spread of genetic subtypes? What do mean genetic subtype? Do they mean this virus is different than other? Is subtype, you can ask the question, if subtype C is very significantly different than subtype B, answer is partially correct as, as we understand this virus can replicate faster 
and along with, I told you, an Indian scenario, along with TB, this becomes even deadlier. Okay? And then I spoke about how this virus enters. It uses CCR5 to enter. CCR5 is a, is a seven transmembrane protein. Okay, on a host cell, this virus enters, enters the macrophages and the Langerhans cells. Later on, virus changes its co-receptor and it begins to kill the T lymphocytes. How? By attacking another co-receptor called CXCR4. Okay. Once we know CCR5 is very important, then you can make some antiviral approaches. And our antiviral approach has been to make catalytic RNA, catalytic DNA, ribozyme, okay, that. And then I, I have spoken to you in, the, in my last few minutes how virus, because you all have to know about the system, this RNAi, small RNA world, okay. Now people are called, calling long encoding RNA, so it's an evolving field, okay. What we talk today, you know, may significantly change after five years of thinking, but what we have to make is, we're trying to understand is we have to make our presence, you know, in, in a couple of years, what, what, what we think how this virus is, trying to manipulate our immune system, okay. And I told you, RNAi based immune system, okay, immunity or innate immunity is so very vital for any cell, okay. We all have it, okay. And there are enzymes called Dicer, you know, and Drosha. So please read about microRNA biogenesis. Some of you may work on cancer, some of you may work on skin cells, eye cells, nerve cells, okay. And you will be surprised to see that there are microRNAs involved there. There are microRNAs involved in wound healing, okay. MicroRNAs responsible for diabetes, okay. Connection, straight connection. And there are multiple microRNAs con controlling diabetes, okay. So what I need to say is no matter what field you are in, 